Smell. 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 <laughs> Sainsbury's has been part of our high street for 150 years. Right, are we OK for bags? 26 million of us go through its doors every single week. Oh, yeah, would you like to try any hot cross bun? Go on. Oh, why not? Cheers, thank <laughs> you very <Happy> much. <laughs> but with supermarkets more competitive than ever... Oh, I'd like to shop at Lidl's, actually. ..history counts for nothing. Retail is changing beyond all recognition. Businesses that don't adapt fast enough will ultimately decline. The fact that you have to buy a celery in a plastic bag is ridiculous. During a crucial year, this retail giant has allowed cameras behind the scenes. You're going to meet Her Majesty the Queen. Really? Really? <laughs> <laughs> as they attempt to grow their business. <laughs> Try to woo new customers. Oh, you made my day. <laughs> yes, no, yes, no, yes, no, yes, OK. Hi, great to see you, Thank you. And work together to stop themselves slipping behind their rivals. The M5's closed at the minute. Our stores are screaming out for their products. It's pressurised. You have chosen a very eventful day. We are in a little bit of trouble. Remaining customers, please don't know to the checkout. Thank you. And who's going to be the lucky ones on the end of those Easter eggs, their grandchildren? Oh, all the children. <laughs> They're not children, no. they're quite old. Oh, they're grown-ups? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> it's early April, and the company is gearing up for Easter, the second biggest sales opportunity of the year, bettered only by Christmas. It is within a condensed amount of time, whereas you get the Christmas build-up, and with Easter, it's just over the weekend, so it's short, sharp. And, of course, it's springtime, so customers are happy too. And with so much business up for grabs, Every supermarket is trying to set themselves apart from the rest. Ours are the best. Well, actually, I was in Asda the other day, and they, theirs are a little bit cheaper, but they're smaller. Have you seen the size of those Easter eggs down there? <laughs> they're huge. It's a cheddar cheese-shaped egg. Eggs should be chocolate. Easter might have started on the shop floor, but with three weeks to go, big decisions are still being made on what to stock for the holiday weekend. How are we doing, ladies? If you want to buy spirits, if you want to buy Baileys, if you want to buy Prosecco, it's this team over here. So down here, this is our impulse team. And so soft drinks, it's crisps, it's confectionery, it's chocolate. Sandy heads up a department called the Supply Chain, a 200-strong team whose job is to make sure the right food and drink items are in store at the right times. We're forecasting and ordering 30,000 products every day. Um, we're working with just over 2,000 suppliers. And, of course, we're serving just over 26 million customers a week. So this is the engine room of how we get product to our customers um, whenever and wherever they want to shop. OK, everybody, everybody in. Here we go. We are right now into the start of our Easter campaign. We're counting down. So, of course, Easter's later this year. The biggest challenge we're going to face over the next two weeks will be the weather. With the UK set to spend around £1.1 billion over Easter, there's pressure on Sandy and her team to get the stock exactly right to attract the biggest customer share possible. The weather has such a material impact. If it's cold and rainy at Easter, our customers tend to go for the traditional roast. So lots of roast lamb. If it's hot, um, it's outside eating. It's picnics, it's barbecues. We have to plan methodically um, for our events. And so we have to make a decision on what customers are going to eat ahead of Easter. It's, it's critical. The traditional roast lamb is the best seller at Easter, so is ordered in extra-large quantities months in advance from New Zealand. The risk is, if the weather hots up, it could go unsold. Carol's looking very summery. Um, Carol obviously was listening to Dave Christie. Where's Dave Christie? You there? Yeah, 19 degrees supposed to be today. So Carol has come prepared 
It's not 19 degrees. Dave is affectionately known as the weather oracle and has the vital job of trying to accurately predict the British weather all year round. So, Dave, do you want to update on the change in weather? The change in weather? It has changed a little bit, Sandy, but not a lot. You know, we've probably got this for about another week, then it may get a little bit nicer, but really only in line with um, what we would expect to see around this time of year or around uh, end of April. So perhaps mid-teens, some sunny conditions, but at the moment, only a 5% chance it's going to be a hot Easter. So there is still a 5% chance, Sandy, but no more. So the weather calls will be in, We'll Dave. put another call in the end of this week with the Met Office, yep. um, and then we'll probably go daily from Tuesday next week. Great. Thanks very much. We're expecting the weather for Easter to be a normal seasonal average, so that's good news. Um, that's, um, you know, if that's what happens, then um, we will have absolutely the right product in stores for our customers. I do occasionally lose sleep, you know, when it looks like the weather's going to change, trying to second guess how our customers will behave. I don't think I've ever got it drastically wrong, thankfully, and yet. <laughs> Whatever the weather, there's one Easter item that is guaranteed to sell. Chocolate eggs. Children in the UK receive an average of eight Easter eggs each. But before any of them arrive in store, they're first held in distribution centres across the country. We start receiving Easter eggs um, middle of December. At the moment, we've got 125,000 cases. So what I mean by a case is that, OK, and that has got five individual Easter eggs in it. So a lot of different pack sizes. Um, so estimate probably about one and a half million Easter eggs on site at the moment, individual Easter eggs. So Easter Sunday, April the 21st, we'll be clear of Easter eggs the Thursday beforehand, and we'll get it all out to store. And then it's over to the store, then they've got to sell it. What's your favourite egg? Which one are you getting this year? I'm not a big chocolate eater. A little bit, but not too much. Um, but, yeah, and the lint, that's nice. Actually, that's nice. I do like a ripple. Anything without nuts. Anything without nuts and, yeah, Maltesers, yeah, I like them. That's watching a movie, Easter egg, innit? Maltesers. Just a little bit, keep nibbling at it. Particularly dark chocolate. Oh, yeah, I'll do like minstrels as well. Oh, mini eggs. It's so long since I've had a mini egg. John's job between now and the end of Easter is to empty his depot of over a million chocolate eggs. Every hour, night and day, lorries leave and make their way to stores. I never thought I would say I could be sick of seeing chocolate, but, but after this morning, I, th I think I seriously am. I'd last a couple of hours to fill it again about, about lunchtime. you think it's mad, but the number of eggs we see around the building, we must have, I don't know, 20, 30 balls on the shop floor, but they'll all need replenishing probably in two or three hours. How much would a, a heart be? Oh, well, less than a couple of quid, I would have thought. Hedge End, near Southampton, is managed by Becky. <laughs> I'm never a fan of meat. <laughs> no, just don't like... flesh. <laughs> Mike. Yep. Slapdash crosses. Yes. Sam. Wonky crosses. Can't have wonky crosses. Becky is one of the company's rising stars and in charge of their fifth biggest store. Oh, there's a lot of Brussels sprouts on the floor. <laughs> she has the pressure of hitting some of the highest sales targets this Easter. OK, so I just wanted to go through the Easter trading guide just to check where we are. OK, so meat counter. Um, on promotion from the 10th of April to the 30th, 
Peak sales days for roasting joints will be Good Friday and the Saturday. So it's a day behind the fish counter. Yep, lots of lamb. Lots of lamb. We've got it all. Anything you want to raise with me? Anything I can do? Good, good. OK, so what, should we go and have a look at the lines then um, on the fish counter and see what's coming so far? Yeah. Yeah? OK. For Becky, the next few weeks could be some of the most challenging of the year. I'm driven. I'm competitive. <laughs> Don't drop them. Any breakages have to be eaten on site. <laughs> On Britain's brutally competitive high street, customer service is everything. And that means dealing with unhappy customers quickly and effectively. Hello. Three bags of post. Last year, Sainsbury's opened a state-of-the-art lab in East London, where they investigate complaints. Interesting to see what we've got today. Okay. Every week, hundreds of parcels arrive from customers. Just don't know what's going to be inside, so it's a bit like Christmas. Should you shake it? Should you smell it? Juliet leads the team of analysts. We can literally get anything. So sometimes we can get a leg of lamb or we could get an ironing board. You know, we could get a soiled nappy. We could literally get anything that they're obviously not happy about. There's lots of glass. I think we need to be careful. Ah, oh, that's a real shame. So what someone says is complaining about a spider in a bag of salad, and they put the spider in a glass jar, but unfortunately, the glass jar is smashed, and I've got no idea where the spider is. Oh, there it is. It's dead. Oh, it's a lovely colour. It's green. Wow, look at that beauty. Isn't that beautiful? It's yeah, lovely. I think, I, think it's I think the worst thing is the smelly things, because when customers literally put in an envelope and put it in the post, and then it just comes in just smells. Oh, you've got a whole chicken? We've got a whole chicken. Oh, my goodness, it absolutely stinks. Uh, yeah, there's a piece of onion in there as well. See, it's got green tinge to it. Um. Was it green? Yeah. Well, I hope so. I'm colourblind, but... <laughs> <laughs> That's why someone else has to do <laughs> Juliet helped design the multi-million pound laboratory, including all the decor. We've got a giant tarantula. This came from bananas from Dominican Republic. But unfortunately, obviously it can't survive. It's not warm enough in this country. And so I just thought, actually, let's get her preserved. She, she did. Yeah, Tara. Yeah, Tara the tarantula. Yeah. Sainsbury's is the only supermarket to have its own laboratory to investigate complaints and test the quality of its products. So this is the um, DNA room. So this is where we carry out meat and fish speciation testing. So it's checking that our beef burgers have got beef in them, our pork burgers have got pork in them. We can do our own analysis. So it's weevils. Yeah. Like those, like, flower beetles. They're really pretty, though, aren't they? Juliet and her team have just 24 hours to open and assess complaints. That's really, really, really unusual. So obviously it shouldn't happen. We'll send it back to the supplier. Get them to check all their pest records, see if they've got them on site anywhere. We obviously want all our customers to keep shopping with us. So it is really important that we investigate as far as we can. And there's one complaint which has increased tenfold over the past year. Let's see what it is first. Oh. Uh, plastic. Customers are sending back their plastic to us. It's probably getting at least one a day, whereas previously it might have been like one a week. So the customer's saying, non-recyclable packaging collected during my shopping in your stores. I'm greatly disappointed that in our current climate, that convenience and profits are prioritised over environmental impact. Britain's leading supermarkets create more than 800,000 tonnes of plastic packaging waste every year. So do you want to make a pile of that, Chris, for over there? The problem is, because it's not recyclable, some of it's going to have to go in the bin. But I think that's the customer's point, isn't it? 
we're working to, to address the plastic issue. What we need to make sure that the product is protected, so from a safety point of view and also from a contamination point of view, so that we don't add more foreign bodies in so they end up here because the packaging isn't completely suitable. So it's quite tricky for the team to come up with the right solution. Well, I hope your car's not too far away because it's chucking it down now. And if one more person tells me it's good for the garden, I'm going to lump them. <laughs> After the tone, please record your name and then press hash. Sainsbury's. With two weeks to go until Easter, the extra-large order of lamb is on its way from New Zealand in anticipation of a rush for roasts. Supply chain manager Dave is making his weekly call to the Met Office to get an update on the weather. Customers buy different things depending on the weather. So we built a relationship with the Met Office um, where we have the ability to talk to them on an ad hoc basis around the seasonal periods like Easter or Christmas. If you think about when it's really hot, um, our customers might go and have a barbecue, so they'll be looking to buy burgers and bread rolls or sausages. Um, so it's important to us that we have the right product in our shops when our customers want to buy it. Hi, Lawrence, are you on from the Met Office? Good afternoon, yes, yeah, I'm here. Hi, Lawrence, it's uh, Dave from Sainsbury's. Uh, we've got the team here as, as usual. What we're really looking for, as you know, this time of year is to try and understand what our customers are going to buy, whether they're going to trade into more warmer weather products or more cooler weather products. Is it fair to say that it is most likely that our customers will be eating roast dinners, they'll be still inside, um, rather than moving outside into lighter eating and barbecues? The weather for that time of year um, that we're looking at, yes, yeah, seems to be fairly typical. It could be quite cloudy. There may be some sunny spells at times, but the, the general theme, it looks like it's going to be cloudy um, with kind of average temperatures. So we're probably somewhere in the region around about 12 to 13 degrees. It doesn't look to be um, anything like a heat wave or anything like that during that period. Great. That's all from me. We'll want to talk to you again, if that's OK, um, before we get into that key trading period. That sounds absolutely perfect. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye-bye. Having catered for roast lamb, average weather temperature is exactly the forecast the team wants. But with the British climate, Dave knows that a lot can change in two weeks. What do you think of the clothing department? It's pretty good, though, isn't it, eh? I know. Uh, the changing rooms are weird. I know. No, it's no. a bit special, isn't it? I went down there to look and I could have come away with boots, a bag, a coat, everything. <laughs> As price wars squeeze down profits on groceries, the company is hoping to drive up sales in other areas. That's quite me, sorry. <laughs> Supermarket fashion now adds around £3.6 billion to the UK clothing market each year. When we first started doing clothing, it was very small and it wasn't perceived as fashionable or something you'd want to admit to actually wearing. Now we do have the right product and the right quality to actually um, take on your Marks and Spencers and your next. Sainsbury's label 2 is now so extensive they are the fifth largest retailer of clothes in the UK. We can see if we can add some colour into this one. And at its headquarters in Anstey Park near Coventry, they are already planning for Christmas. Christmas is massive. I think um, for clothing it's a big, a big event, but we're a supermarket, so that whole family dynamic that goes into that period of, time, period of the year is, is a huge event for us. But there is one thriving part of the Christmas market the company hasn't yet taken advantage of. Dog jumpers. There is a dog here dressed as a snowman, which I'm trying to work, get my head around. Having discovered their customers have more pets than children, buyer Seth and his team have decided to take on the competition. We've seen ASOS offer Christmas jumpers for dogs. We've seen Pets at Home and also H&M. TK Maxx do a lot around the Christmas period, um, and dog accessories are massive for them, so... Yeah. I mean, you know, scrolling through this, I think it's a little bit of a question of who isn't doing them now. Um, yeah, it feels that way. It does. It does. 
I'm not sure that I ever envisaged going into menswear to talk about jumpers for dogs, but um, as unusual as it feels, it does feel like a, yeah, a really positive opportunity. Traditionally, even at the high-end fashion, you know, brands like Gucci and Prada do dog accessories, you know, who'd have thought? For us, again, logical next stage and one that fits really comfortably within um, the sort of overall appeal for that family dynamic within the supermarket. The team has ordered samples and as soon as they arrive from the supplier, they will try them out for size on their first canine models. Eight a.m. and there's trouble at head office in London. Staff arriving for work are being greeted by a Greenpeace doorstep protest. There's no need for plastic packaging on all these products. You're fueling a worldwide crisis. The amount of plastic you use is outrageous. Do you something? In the midst of an ecological crisis, uh, single-use plastic is no longer acceptable. We need drastic policy change, and they need to do it not in the next 10 years, it needs to be done in the next year or two. Uh, this isn't something that can be done in a piecemeal fashion. It has to come from the people at the top on the corporate level. And... The campaign group has singled out Sainsbury's as the worst supermarket for plastic waste. Plastic impacts turtles, whales and more. Reduce your plastic, Sainsbury's. Sainsbury's were bottom in our league table. We want them to show their customers and also to the rest of their competitors because they're bringing the whole sector down and making it easier for other supermarkets to do far less. And then they're actually going to step up uh, and try and be part of the solution. The same as we say to their customers, they're going to help them live well for less. But when it comes to plastic, we wish that they would apply that same philosophy. Finally, the police bring the protest to an end. <laughs> they usually say, oh, sorry about the bags. I said, no, it's fine. A bag's a bag. <laughs> Four years ago, UK supermarkets introduced a five pence charge for plastic bags on checkouts. Since then, Disposable plastic bag use has fallen by 90%. Wow, that was some packing. <laughs> you were determined to get it in those two bags. <laughs> but Sainsbury's don't yet have an alternative for other single-use plastic in store. I think Sainsbury's behind the curve. I think they're one of the market leaders in supermarkets and they should be leading the way. Uh, Morrison's are already starting completely plastic-free fruit and veg areas um, and it's been really well received, so really we should just be getting on with it and doing it. We can't recycle that. We try and recycle that. We can't recycle that. And the fact that you have to buy a celery in a plastic bag is ridiculous. In response to the Greenpeace protest, the quality and innovation team are meeting to discuss how to remove the 290 million plastic bags used every year for loose, fresh products. We need to move faster because there's a customer expectation. And you know that we've had Greenpeace targeting head office. We've had customers writing in every day. What the issue is of getting it to the till. So if we don't have a bag, yeah. what can we put in place? Is there some form of box made out of potentially, we could look at cardboard, something that can be reused and just displayed in the produce area for customers to pick up. Is there a way that we could reuse um, produce boxes? 
and they're often at the back of store, so you could take them and you could put things in there. Yeah, but but, uh, they, but it's also then the, the customer, like myself, at the front door will think, how clean is that crate? Can I throw into the mix yeah. compostable bags? I don't, and I don't know enough about them. As yeah. a, are they beneficial? Are they detrimental? In theory, it's a great idea, yeah. and, and we could get a compostable solution. They're not necessarily that strong, and those materials, as far as I understand, local authorities won't accept them. This is one that some other suppliers are currently doing for Lidl in Germany. Um, it's, um, it's polyester, so it's made of PET, and it's obviously going to be pretty robust. It's kind of polyester PET, so it's, it's going to be long-lasting. You'll be able to get a lot of use out of it. So it needs to be really easy for the customer, because at the moment, what's there now is really easy. They just, you know, it's in a box, and just pull it out, and um, off they go. You know, they can put their product in. So actually finding a way of making it just as easy for them with the alternative has got to be our key priority. Yeah. One of the common misconceptions is that we ha always have a solution to plastic. Um, we don't in some cases. Would the best thing to do would be to trial some approaches to see what works and what feedback we get? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The global problem with plastic has never been more critical. And like all supermarkets, Sainsbury's are up against time in their bid to find a solution. Hello. Hello. How are we doing? Fine. You're all right. Get in there. Rob, you're doing all right? Yes. With Easter fast approaching, the bakers at Oldbury have been up since 3 a.m. Over this busy season, the in-store bakeries will make and sell around 36 million hot cross buns. Not even joking, these smell amazing. Amazing. They are on towers, they're on baskets on the checkouts, they're on a rack at the front. They're everywhere we could possibly put them. I just want to keep the racks at the front of the towers full, so I've just took a new tower down. Yeah. Um, and that rack at the front is full at the moment, so... So I'm going to get them to do some tannoys, so I just want to push as many through as possible. Okay. Yeah. Thousands of hot cross buns are baked on site and sold every day, and this has bred a friendly competition. Between now and the end of Easter weekend, stores up and down the country are competing to sell the most buns and be declared winners of their region. So the game plan is to win and to beat everybody on the region, so we're just going to bang out as many hot cross as possible. There's no place for second. We need to be top, and I believe that I have got the best bikers. Look at the quality. We're definitely in with the chance. In their region, 18 stores are competing. Oldbury would love to win, but if they don't, they want to at least beat arch rivals Kidderminster, who are just 16 miles down the road. And if Kidderminster don't win, all they want to do is beat Oldbury. How many do you reckon you're making per day? Probably just shy of a thousand. It's a friendly war, um, but we don't like to lose. <laughs> it's not an easy process. We have to cross them, then cook them, and then glaze them and then they have to be packed, priced. So it's not an easy process. Even been coming in and doing a bit of crossing myself as well. Crossing and glazing. But they, uh, take, they take the mickey out of me and say my crosses aren't as good as theirs, so... Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Got to be a, definitely be Oldbury. <laughs> With six days to go until the Easter weekend, the extra-large order of lamb from New Zealand has arrived in the depots and is now being delivered to stores across the country. Right, I'll take this one then. <laughs> I've got friends and family around on uh, Easter Sunday, so we were having a nice big meal together. <laughs> Hi, it's John from the Met Office. Hi, John, how are you? I'm OK, thank you. Yourself? Yeah, very good, thank you. Average weather temperatures have been predicted for the long Easter weekend. 
Supply chain manager Dave and the team are calling the Met Office to confirm that it's going to be a roast lamb Easter. Uh, looking forward for an update, I guess. That's OK. Uh, yeah, sure. Um, as we head into Friday, it's dry, lengthy sunny spells, possibly uh, more in the way of, of water or sunshine. Um, and we're looking at temperatures of 16 to 22 degrees. And that's very much the same then as we head into a sort of Saturday, but with sort of probably around about a 30 or 40 percent chance of maybe hitting 23 or 24 by, by Saturday. Um, and what's your confidence level? being that sunshine and temperatures you've, you've spoken about, John? I've got quite high confidence. Is there much wind about, just thinking about how it's going to feel to our customers um, with 20, 23 degrees? Perhaps if there's a lot more wind around, it might take the edge off? Um, the winds are going to be uh, much lighter, though, so um, again, that's going to help it feel warm. Great, much appreciated. Thank you. OK, thank you. Bye. Thank you. There we go. So Friday and Saturday does look like, and from what we've heard, uh, I like it to be very warm. Right. I'm done. Yeah. What's happened is over the weekend, the Met Office revised their forecast. We're now likely to see customers wanting to um, have lighter meals, outdoor eating and potentially some barbecues. So we need to look at our plans, talk to our suppliers and work out what we're now going to do. <laughs> Well, the weather always plays a trick, doesn't it? it? Wouldn't it be wonderful if we just knew what happened um, with the weather every day? We don't. So we have to work very, very methodically, very calmly, and just execute a new plan. So can I just check, Dave? So 20, I think I've heard you say 24, 25. Mm, yes. Yeah? OK. OK. And what a level of confidence? Hi. Emma, what does that mean for you? So that will mean we'll see lower sales across joints. The data suggests that we should be taking about 15 to 20% out of, of those joint areas. The, the piece we're working through now is how many of our customers will continue to have a roast occasion because it's Easter. And then on the big areas of things like burgers and uh, kebabs, so we think that this will be a barbecue occasion this weekend. So we're looking at some significant uplifts on those areas, probably in the region of about 200%, if not more. So this is our hot weather plan. So we just need to, we're just calling up our suppliers at the moment to action that plan as we speak. Hi, Sarah, it's Mike. Um, just calling because I'm guessing you have seen the weather forecast that it's getting hotter towards the end of the week. With the new weather forecast, the team is switching plans and using data from previous hot Easters. This means they need to increase the supply of barbecue food and bread rolls as quickly as possible. Hi, Louise, it's Chris from Sainsbury's. How are you? The numbers that I've sent through to you, um, I'd just like to know how, what's your initial thoughts on them? Do they seem challenging? So on burgers, we're looking at about 200% more, and on the kebabs and summer eating, we're looking at about 450% uplift. But Sainsbury's suppliers also supply their competitors, and there are only so many rolls to go round. That's three voicemails in a row. <laughs> I reckon they were on the phone to Tesco, to be fair. Uh, <laughs> At the clothing headquarters in Anstey Park, three new models are arriving for a fitting. We're having a dog fit session for our Christmas dog jumpers, and this is the first time that we've ever done them. The company is entering an established market, going up against some of the biggest fashion brands out there. As they're doing this for the first time, it's trial and error to get the sizes right. OK, what ones do you want to put on first? Um, I'm just going to let Hank go. Go for small. Yeah. What size is Ted? Like a small... Come here, Hank. Yeah, it's between the small and the medium. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. 
Sorry. <laughs> he just loves Ted. <laughs> I think it's got to be turned around. How do you get it? Oh! Oh, no! Oh, oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Oh, no! Hang, 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 No. No humping today. When you do a product for the first time, it's really important that it fits correctly because you want them to repeat purchase with you. So this will be something, if it's successful, we'll do it. We could do it for Valentine's. We could do it for Halloween. It's so important that it is right. He's got a very wide neck. 41. 41. Oh! We need 11. We know that the red one is the best fit. Yeah. Around the neckline. We're still going to reduce it by 2.5 because I feel like it's, um, it's a bit too wide. Perfect. And everyone's happy? All tails are wagging? <laughs> really pleased. That was definitely well worth getting all of you in. With the jumpers selected, they've now got five months to make adjustments and get them ready for the shop floor. Hello, how are you? Hello, great, Good. Since the Greenpeace protests, pressure has been mounting on the supermarket to reduce plastic. So CEO Mike Coop has made it a matter of priority. I want customers always to think about Sainsbury's as a business that sets out to do the right thing. When you know, people call us out in the way that Greenpeace described, that was a wake-up call. In the end, Sainsbury's, for any number of reasons, has a responsibility to reduce our environmental impact. So in the last few weeks, we've made pretty significant commitments to reduce the amount of plastic in our fresh products. One of Mike's first pledges is to remove the bags currently used to carry loose fruit and vegetables. And transformation manager Jonathan is responsible for trialling a replacement. Oh, that was good. He's narrowed it down to three reusable bag options. Right, bags. Paper was discounted very early. It's not reusable. It is also not great from a water perspective both in usage and pollutants. You use a lot of water and chemicals to generate paper. Cotton typically has the highest CO2 output. I think generally one kilogram of cotton needs about 90,000 litres of water. There are some pollutant issues around cotton generally. 3% of the world's cultivated land grows cotton, but that land generates 24% of um, insecticide usage, which is not sustainable. Uh, jute's carbon footprint definitely is lower than cotton, so from that perspective, it is the next one up. Um, it's not great for reuse, if I'm honest. It breaks down uh, in the wash. So we moved to our pet. These bags use one recycled plastic bottle, which potentially would have gone into landfill otherwise. Its benefits are it's strong. It is definitely reusable. It's lightweight which from a transportation view of getting it into Sainsbury's is useful. It's reusable, it's recycled plastic, not virgin yeah. plastic, so... And it is recyclable as well, so... Yeah, um, so after use it's... it's yeah. Okay. We believe a R-PET multi-use bag is the way to go. 40,000 R-PET bags will now be trialled in two stores, and if successful, they will be rolled out across the country putting an end to the millions of plastic bags currently being used and thrown away each year. We give out 290 million of these a year. If we can reduce that number or remove 290 million in one change, I think that's a, that's a good news story. Jonathan is on his way to two stores where the R-PET bags are being trialled. commitment to reduce plastics from this week will be moving all single-use plastic bags from our store. The chosen stores are Lincoln and Kidlington. Where am I going? Weigh them, weigh them, yeah. them on there and then stick the labels onto the bag. Yeah. Oh, I'll have one of those. Yeah. Introducing the new bag has also meant a whole new system. Customers must now weigh their own produce. Sorry. Ah. Sorry. It's all right. 
You go again. It's all right, don't worry. Okay. Just put the tomatoes in the bag. Because of, I think later on you've got a. Uh, I'm using my own bag. Yeah. Fine. Okay. Mesh produce bag. Yeah. I print the label. Yeah. Easy peasy. Yeah, Thirty pence. Trying to break ingrained custom behaviour here is, yeah. is essentially what we're testing. We do want some loose carrots, but we need to know. Do we need a separate bag? No, you can actually use, can use the same you bag? can actually use the same bag for, for as many different products as you can you wish. Oh can I show you our new recycle bags? Uh, no, thank you. No. Removing the single-use bags comes at a cost to the customer. They're only 30p. They're made out of recyclable uh, plastic bottles. 30p. What for that? I shan't buy many. Some are complaining about the price issue. I mean, 30p when they're saying well, they can buy a 10 p bag. We are not making any money I off said, those. We, we aren't making yeah. any money out of it at all, so as in Saints Yeah. I'm not so sure that, you know, 30 pence is going to attract too many people. They're big enough, they could give them away to encourage more people to use them. By giving them a free bag beforehand, we essentially were saying you were going to get another free bag the next time you come in. And so it just played into this disposable behaviour that we are trying to move customers away from. I just served a lady yeah. who bought three of the bags yeah. for different purposes. Oh, what were the purposes? I'm generally interested. A washing machine to put to undies in her washing machine. And, and, did, and did she have any produce in any of them? No. So she just bought the bag? She bought three empty bags. Well, that's the opposite behaviour that we wanted. Yeah. This is just the beginning, and the trial will continue in store for the next two weeks before Jonathan decides whether the replacement bag can be rolled out across the country. Have we got the, um, the final roll-out solution perfect yet? I don't think so, um, but that's why we trial. Simple. What can I say to that? Brilliant. <laughs> it's 24 hours until the start of the hot Easter weekend, and several tonnes of barbecue meat have arrived at the Basingstoke depot, in time for the second busiest trading period of the year. Lucas, why are you not in the produce? Andre is one of the 850 strong team in a race against time to get the meat dispatched to stores. It's busy in here today. There's a lot of people about. It's nice outside, so we are doing a lot of barbecue food. All the burgers, sausages, kebabs. The supermarket is now ready for both lamb roasts and barbecue customers. But what they don't know is if the hot weather will leave the lamb unsold. What are you doing for Easter? Are you doing lamb or barbecue? To me, it'll probably be beans on toast. <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Why not treat yourself this Easter with our freshly made hot cross buns available from our in store bakery at 85 pence a pack. Thank you for shopping at Sainsbury's in Albury. In Albury, the hot cross bun competition is entering its final days. Yep, I'll go and get some more and refill this. Beautiful hot cross. To be fair, I've only filled it about half an hour ago, so, yeah, it's going quite well. They are lovely. Nice and warm, nice and sticky. Lovely. Just what you want from a hot cross bun. Jo and her team are working hard to beat their rivals, Kidderminster, to the much-coveted title of hot cross bun champions. I've got two towers. I've got them at kiosk and customer services. I've got them on the rack at the front. Um, so, yeah, in a lot of places. It takes two hours to get a hot cross bun onto the shop floor. And as fast as the bakers are making them, manager Joe is selling them. Like I promised. Oh. Look you at these for beauties. Got Anybody else? Nice, fresh, warm hot cross buns. In the bakery, Steve and Rob have been hot cross bunning 10 hours a day for five days straight. Because we're putting so much through, it's like a conveyor belt, basically. Like by the time we pull them out, they'll be sold, and then pull them back out again. It's been quite tough. <laughs> Hello, got some hot cross buns. Nice and fresh. I'm just going to throw them in people's baskets and hope for the best. Be 
think they've not tried them, they need to try them. You both like hot cross buns? I do like them, yeah. <laughs> I used to. <laughs> 16 miles away in Kidderminster. I'm just going to get some more. Can I have some more packs, please, mate? Uh, hot cross. They are going all out to try and win the title of top hot cross bunners. You know, I think we're in, in good mood to, to take this, definitely. Maybe a bit more sampling on that sort of stuff. And hopefully that, that, that'll drive those through. To keep Oldbury in their place, manager Steve has charged his team with offering samples at the front of store. Thank you. Would you like to try a little bit? Try a bit. Thank you. You're welcome, no problem. See, I like mine just like that, but a lot of people have them toasted. Yeah, it's got to be toasted with butter. No, I just have mine like this, with butter and jam. Oh, yeah, would you like to try any hot cross bun? Go on. What's that? <laughs> hot cross bun. Oh, why not? Cheers, thank Happy you very much. Happy Easter. <laughs> Do you think Holbury will be doing something similar? Yes, they might be doing something similar. Could be. We want to win. We're going to win. We're going to win. <laughs> oh, yeah, would you like to try any hot cross buns? Well, dry and sunny for the majority of this Easter week and glorious weather, in fact. Four nations recorded their highest temperatures of the year so far. Easter weekend looks set to bring something even warmer. It's wall to wall blue skies, hardly a cloud in sight, and with lighter breezes, we'll probably see. The Easter weekend has arrived, and as predicted, it's a heat wave. In the best of the sunshine. And talking of sunshine, there'll be more of that to go around. We end the week with sunny skies and with higher temperatures as well. We could see highs reaching around 24, 25 degrees, and that looks like being one of the warmest days. We're here. Morning. Morning. You all right? Yeah. Becky's store in Hedge End is expected to make half a million pounds more than their average week. We got there, my darling. 130.17. Whoa. And most of the extra sales need to come in this Easter weekend. So we've got the charcoal out, the uh, compost out, and the loungers. We've already had uh, a male customer ask for flip flops this morning. Well, you never, with a bit of luck, you might need this this weekend. The lady said it was going to be 22. I don't know about that. Oh. I heard 24 for Sunday. That's what I'm banking on. Yeah. And you're all prepared with your cosy. Oh, I am, I am. <laughs> yeah. All right. Morning. All right. Yeah, you? Yeah. Not bad. Not Did bad. Just wait for the board to arrive, right, Dave. Yeah. Get up there on that motorway and bring <laughs> them in. <laughs> It'll be barbecue stuff today as well. Yeah. To meet the demands of the sudden change in weather. There's the sausages. There have been deliveries of burgers, sausages and kebabs throughout the night. This will go. This will go. Um, I predict that we will not have enough of this um, over the weekend, but we'll see what supply chain can push through. Well, at the moment, it's been mainly barbecue, and everybody has said, oh, it's too hot to have roast. Nice barbecue this weekend, yeah. Because apparently it's going to be our scorch, yeah. Rocketing sales of barbecue food have slowed down sales of roast lamb, and the shelves are still full. Thanks and for some price for seven, six dates. It's really about the sure we've got a couple of dates out there and holding back the longer dates for after Easter. As high-value items, Becky can't afford for them to go to waste. She needs to act now to save the joints with the latest expiry dates. We might need to take off the 26th and 27th. I'll tell you what they're doing is they take off the joints that are dated next week to push through the right dates for us to sell at full price. The pressure is on to clear the lamb stock because the store is closed tomorrow for Easter Sunday. 
people tend to go a little bit like crazy. It's like they've got a four pint of milk and if they don't get six of them, they think they're going to run out. We usually have about 20 tills open, um, and then when it gets to Easter, we try to have every till open. People tend to park at that side of the car park, and they all congregate around at that end, so we try to push them down here. So... Oh, excuse me. In the rush to get customers through the door, the message to remove lamb from the shelves hasn't been passed on to the new staff on shift. and the joints removed by Becky go back out. It doesn't take long for Becky to spot the mistake. Where's the communication? Put out three more dates of lamb. No one's answering that. Three dates of lamb. Again. And that. Why is it there? Because it should be there. Shanks there. It shouldn't be there either. So what's... Who's done it? We don't want to cause waste. It's hard seeing all the nice weather out there, but, you know... We have to get through it and just think, I've only got 40 minutes left. <laughs> As Easter Saturday draws to a close, Becky and her team are taking stock. What are we left with then? Whoa, Maltesers it is. <laughs> <laughs> so just a lot of large. I'm quite happy with where we are. Um... Have you got your eggs yet? Yeah? No. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I'll be doing an Easter egg hunt at 8 o'clock tomorrow morning, so I'll do that before I go tonight. Yeah. But it won't be until after the bank holiday that head office can crunch the numbers from all the stores and find out if the last-minute change in weather has affected profits. So, how was your weekend? Yeah, yeah, didn't the sun shine? We'll have a chat with Dave. Where's Dave? We'll have a chat shortly. <laughs> it's the first day back after the long Easter weekend, and head of the supply chain, Sandy, is about to announce the all-important Easter figures. So what was that, Chris? It was a 5% chance of a hot Easter. 5% chance of a hot, yeah, hot Easter. OK, so... Yeah. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it was a very, very hot weekend. I think, first of all, let me start by saying a huge thank you to each and every one of you for a fantastic job. Um, Easter Saturday um, was our biggest Easter Saturday of sales ever. And then on, on Bank Holiday Monday, we had the biggest cash Bank Holiday Monday ever. Who can guess what the number one selling line was? last week in food, in value. Whole leg of lamb. So, we said customers would be switching from hot to cold, but it was the number one um, line last week, whole leg of lamb. So, leg of lamb, milk, Prosecco, Easter eggs and strawberries. But many of our customers, and I know there'll be many of you in the group, you were pressure washing your patio. <laughs> the Karcher pressure washer was the number one selling line last week in Argos. So a great, great Easter weekend. And of course, it's all now about how do we prepare for the week ahead and the recovery. So Dave, how is it looking this week? I'm not sure, I'm not sure I'm going to respond, Sandy. I <laughs> don't want to get it wrong again. I mean, remember, <coughs> I just tell you what the Met Office forecast <laughs> were the to be. No, I'm not a forecaster myself, but it is going to transition now. So uh, it's cloudy. It's still quite cloudy. In Oldbury, Manager Joe has just received the results of the hotly contested hot cross bun competition. So it looks like we are fifth. Kidderminster second. 
Not only have Oldbury failed to win, but they've also been beaten by Kidderminster for the second year running. We couldn't have done any more than we did. We had them everywhere. We had them all over checkouts, at the front of the stall, in the middle of the aisles, everywhere. Sampling, you name it, we did it. So, we, uh, we, we didn't come first. Okay. Only just off, only by 191 packets. But we did beat Oldbury. Oh, brilliant. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, happy days. Happy so we've, days, yeah. We've beaten by quite a... Uh, really quite good. a good amount. So, so we, we beat them by uh, 2,141. Oh, wow. So we absolutely smashed them in the end. Yes. Yes. Drinks on Steve, I think it was, isn't oh, yeah. it? <laughs> Drinks I'm on Steve. That, yeah. <laughs> Did you know we have now removed all single use plastic bags from our fruit and veg aisles? We are now offering reusable bags made from recycled plastic. Or you can use your own bags instead. When the trial of the reusable produce bags finished, CEO Mike Coop decided to go ahead and roll them out across all 1,400 stores. Our customers trust us to do the right thing. And so our job is ultimately, when we're called to account, we are seen to be doing the right things and we are doing the right things. To combat plastic waste even further, Sainsbury's have just pledged to halve their use of plastic by 2025. Half the plastic by 2025 is a big pledge and we don't necessarily know what all the answers are, but this is certainly a step on the right journey. Next time... Welcome to Sainsbury's. The Queen is due to arrive at 11 o'clock. I'm going to meet the Queen. We don't have any tills. Do we have to use the application? I prefer to use cash, to be honest. <laughs> get a new store wrong in the first week or two weeks, it could take six months to a year to get it to stabilise. We're fearful the fact that they're coming to eat up all everybody else's business. The small retailer does not have a chance. The Open University has produced a free poster that looks behind the scenes of supermarkets. To order your free copy, please call 0300-303-2088 or go to bbc.co.uk forward slash inside the supermarket and follow the links to the Open University. Tomorrow, check out a special surprise from Daisy Ridley and John Boyega. Children in Need begins at 7.30. And see how fish leap out of the water to get a bite of fruit. Seven Worlds, One Planet, streaming now on BBC iPlayer. Next, how can such an appalling crime in the heart of London have no witnesses? The Met, policing London.